Nigeria seeks, um, needs more than laws to hold credible elections, says Deputy Senate President Omo Agigi. And Yoruba group Afeni Fera urges Nigerians to resort to defending themselves against insecurity. This is Plus Politics, a Diamere Anacom. The Deputy Senate President Ovi Amo Omoagege has said that the perfect law in itself uh, cannot guarantee credible elections as long as other parts of the election process remains flawed. Uh, joining us to discuss this is a legal practitioner, Jideo Logun, and uh, social analyst Kevin Akoji. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you Thank very you much. Evening. Um, I, I, I want to start with you, Barista Logan, because um, Senator Mwagege obviously is um, one of our lawmakers. Uh, he is the uh, second in command, obviously, uh, on the floor of the Senate. And we cannot talk about the electoral process if we do not talk about the, um, the electoral law, which is still facing some backlash. And um, there are certain things in that, well, law that is still pending. And we remember what happened over the past month, you know, back and forth on the PIB and the Electoral Act or bill, um, which is supposed to be law. But let's step back a bit. Senator Mwagege is obviously looking at the fact that it's not just enough for us to have laws, but then there are other parts that we need to play to make sure that the whole electoral system in itself is workable. But, but do you buy into this narrative? Do you also agree with him that there are certain things we need to do other than the law? Absolutely. You know, and I, I tie myself with his position because we need to push the law back to the very essence of law, which is the rule of law, which means law itself should prevail. And the rule of law is a principle by which all persons, institutions, and entities are accountable to laws that are publicly promulgated, equally enforced and directed at regulating society towards national development. And if under the present laws we have, we have not been able to achieve much, I doubt if by coming up with new laws or additional laws, we are likely to achieve more in the sense that, uh, let's, let's even put the amendment that is going on in the Electoral Act to test. Even though the existing law gives INEC the power to transmit results of election electronically. You can see the amendment that is being brought in, that that will be subject to NCC, you know, and that is a way of trying to gag INEC, to tie the hands of INEC. And of course, suspicion comes in under that. So it's not about having laws, but about our respecting the laws. I have said it before that I particularly monitor the election of 2019 and almost all the electoral offenses were committed. As of today, how many have been prosecuted in respect of those crimes? How many have been convicted? I mean, if you don't prosecute, how do you convict? So I agree with him. And according to him, he's saying that except we have a sustainable electoral process, that is established on adequate electioneering culture. I, I think I accept with that. And that is when we can have a credible, a fair, and an election we can present to the world as standing the test of democracy. So, and if that is coming from the uh, second in command in the National Assembly, I think there is hope for this country. So what he needs to do further is to prevail on his colleagues in the other arms of government that you know, uh, the rule of law is what can make us step up on the platform of practicing true democracy and de uh, delivering good governance to the people. Just as you rightly said, it behoves upon him and his colleagues to make, you know, certain um, legislation that would help. But I, I, I thought about this all day. 
all of the major parts, all of the moving parts of our electoral system that he's making reference to cannot actually be fixed in isolation of the law. So if we do not have laws that are strong enough to be enforced, enforceable laws, I mean, whether people adhere to or rather come together to try to make the electoral system work or not, those laws are what will be effective in the long run. So can you say that we, let's reform our electoral system without having laws that are stringent and are strong enough to hold people accountable? You know, like, like I mentioned, and that is the absolute position in this matter, we have laws in the country. If we have complied with the laws we have, trying to enhance the capacity of these laws will be welcome. But we have not even respected the laws on that. For example, let me try and recite what we have in Section 15 of the Nigerian Constitution 1999 as amended. It states in subsection 1 that the motto of the Federal Republic of Nigeria shall be unity, faith, peace, and progress. Have we been able to deliver on that? The answer is no. And it further says that accordingly, the national integration shall be actively encouraged. And you can see how polarized the nation is now. In subsection 4, it says that the state shall foster a feeling of belonging and of involvement among the various people of the Federation to the end that loyalty is first to the nation that overrides sectional loyalties. Can we claim to have achieved that? The answer is no. So it's not about having more laws. It's not about amending the existing laws. It's about allowing the law itself to have its way in the society. But what have we experienced? We have had some players who overrun the powers of the laws and they take laws into their hands. So what is the essence of focusing on the laws? Why don't you focus on the culture of respecting the laws of the land? And then um, if you look at section 15, subsection 5 of the same constitution, it says that the state shall abolish all corrupt practices and abuse of power. And can we claim to have achieved that? The answer is no. So let's focus on what we have. If we cannot respect fully the laws we have now, having additional laws is not likely to make any difference. So the first thing that we should focus on is changing our culture to the rule of law. If okay. we respect the rule of law, we will make progress. But if we continue to disrespect the rule of law, it doesn't matter. We may make laws that can fill the whole earth. They will be meaningless. Okay. Uh, Mr. Koji, this, this question, uh, Koji, I beg your pardon, this question is for you. Um, following up on what Mr. Ologun has said, taking a look at our electoral system and, and why political parties are being run the way they are, um, and I always bring this up with, you know, sp uh, spokespersons of different political parties in this country, as opposed to what we have outside the country, political parties have ideologies, they have a modus operandi, but ours does not necessarily fall, you know, in that line so with all of the things that we see even in the apc the pdp and the back and forth that's been happening does it seem like we're willing to um you know have a country that has a clear-cut political system that is not just um political godfather driven but people driven the ideologies of those parties um, can appeal to the people of the country but in our case, we do not really have that. So really, can we achieve a free, fair, credible election anytime soon? Talk less of having an electoral system that works. Okay, thank you very much for that introduction. So basically, I think I want to take a point of departure. Our political parties all have ideology. They do? What we have concern is its practice. Why? Because... The system is bedeviled with a whole lot of abnormalities, which is why we see them not adhering to the ideologies. In all fairness to the electoral management body, before a political party is registered, you need to submit set of set or series of documents itemizing what you stand for, even as simple as the logo that is going to embody your political party. And so an ideology is actually placed embedded in that constitution or in that particular ideation that they call their political party. The challenge is, is it followed to the letter? And the answer is no. And so let's get the theory right. The theory is always right because we always use the best consultants 
to put these documents together. And that is why the election management body will always at every time, whenever someone applies to register a political party, the party will go through all the screening processes and they will come out a hundred over hundred. And so the, the ideology is strict, it's available, it's strict, but they do not follow it. With regards to credible elections, I do not want to put a whole lot on. Let's say, let me take a minimalist perspective on this. What are the criteria for a credible elections? We have, if we use the word inclusiveness, every person that is of universal suffrage that's 18 years and above has a right to vote and be voted for. Is that accommodated? Yes. Transparency. The process in which persons that want to run for office, the process in which they come out from their political parties, the process in which the election takes place, and the process in which the results are read, is it followed to the letter? Now, there comes the clause. No, because even without me putting out figures, pictures, and videos for everyone to see, we know that there are some lapses, and so we are not up to 100% with transparency. The next is accountability. The results that are being called out, are they called out devoid of influence or change or time or location with regard to the, to the numbers that are called? And can this number be verifiable after two, three years after the election, should someone go to a tribunal and they are making weary with regards to the results? And then lastly, competitiveness. So if at all we we'll say, in fairness to the election management body, inclusiveness is taking note of, transparency is taking note of, accountability is taking note of, competitiveness is taking note of, but the practice has always been the challenge. So yes, I agree with the deputy president in saying that the laws are not enough because I don't want to even say we need more laws. The existing laws, even as they are, can actually deliver a free, fair, and credible election. But how many persons can stay true to the facts of nationalism for God and country and discharge their duties in all fairness and regards for the position they are running for and the duties in which they are striving to want to appeal. That has been the major concern within the Nigerian political ecosystem. But that brings me, all... I mean, you literally have almost answered all the questions that I wanted to ask you, but let, let, let me just, let's backpedal a bit to the issue okay. of political parties and the, mem the people that they throw up at the end of the day. Because I, I want to refer to a statement that was credited to um, Senator Amor Gege. Um, he said, um, I refer to how candidates emerge on political party platforms, campaign rallies and rules, uh, general political actions towards fair, credible elections and political participation by voters. So he's... I mean, he obviously is a member of a political party, and he seems to be querying how these things are done. And you also pointed to some of those things. But let's talk about the, um, the modus operandi of these political parties and how Nigerians were very quick to say that, oh, we have to um, either one a lesser demon and a greater demon, so we go for the lesser demon. But how about, what about our participation in how these people... Uh, um, emerge at the end of the day. Again, in this part of the world, we call politics a dirty game. So even the people who seem to have the slightest idea or would be able to effect some changes never really are interested in joining political parties. So what kind of change do we want? What kind of miracle are we expecting if we're not part of the process in those political parties? Okay, let's, let's, let's take it from here. Personally, with regards to the anomalies that will come up with regards to persons that come out from a political party, the only person we need to hold responsible is the election management body. They, at every time in any party primaries or selection, are always present. And the idea of their presence is to ensure that a just process is followed through. But still yet, we have anomalies such that we might have a certain political party having two primaries side by side. And unfortunately, in that same existence, we have members of the election management body present in both instances. So for this particular anomaly, we can only put the ax right on the election management body. 
they need to do a whole lot to ensure the sanity of that process. But the, but the election to, management to, body comes in when the, the party is about to have its primaries. But I'm saying before the emergence of the person who becomes a flag bearer, there's internal party politics. And that internal party politics decides or determines who finally becomes that flag bearer. Now, I'm asking this question because of the issue of godfatherism and, and you know, who, who tells, who, who selects who to become. I mean, re remember in, in recent months, there were people who were saying uh, when it came to local government elections in Lagos State, a lot of people were pointing to a, the leader of the APC that um, apparently he had a hand in who would run for office. And he came out to say, well, whoever is able to throw his hat into the ring uh, should, you know, participate. So that's where I was going with this question. We're not part of the process, but then we're hoping that it, somebody who is good enough can run or be a party flag bearer. We only wait to get to the polls to, be, to, to say, oh, we want to have free, fair, and credible elections. So I ask the question again, how do we ensure that the process in itself is clean, thorough, and very transparent before we even get to the polls in itself? Okay. A, a, a political party does not exist in isolation. The strength of a political party comes from her membership, the management, and the executive body. And so if persons do not enter that particular political party and sanitize it, you'll be bedeviled with all the ills that will come out from the process that brings up the person that will represent them as the official flag, flag bearer or candidate. And so in fairness to the election management body in this part now, they do not have a role in that. They can be present and watch and observe, but they cannot take any action. And so it behoves on that political party to remember why they were created in the first instance. What was the essence of their existence? What value are they bringing to the political ecosystem of the country Nigeria or the particular position that the persons are running for with regard to the primaries? Because if they do not hold that particular position sacros at all or hold it in extreme value, they will play with the issue. And that's where you now have issues of when somebody that just joined the party yesterday now becomes a flag bearer tomorrow. Why? Because they allowed those excesses to hold sway. And okay. so for that, we push it back to the, to the heads of the political parties. They need to hold the bull by the horn, just like we have in the federal system of government. We have different levels of government. You cannot hold the national body uh, as the primary arbiter or the person responsible for what takes place in the local governments or the arbiter of what takes place in the, on the subnational level. That is the state. Okay. On each level of on each level, there needs to be level of responsibility, ownership, and leadership. And so that leadership needs to be transparent. And they need to get their jobs done because the government and the, all of the papers in the 704 local governments cannot come and force them to have a credible system. And so, if not that, many a times, we are shameless. Let's call a spade a spade. And so, we do not care the process in which these persons come up. We just go ahead, put things together. So long as some pockets are oiled, so long as some wallets are filled, they go ahead and present a person and then there is no opposition in that same political party with regards to saying, no, this is what we stood for in our constitution, stating X, Y, and Z, that for you to be able to run for a position in the party, you need to be a member of the party for over four months, five months, as the case may be. You need to be a financially active member of the party. But that is not what we have now in practice in present in Nigeria. We have persons, especially we all understand the whole idea of the campaign. Till tomorrow, I still do not understand where we make ease of that convenience. We are in someone move from one party conveniently to the other just to run for an office to make sure he wins and continues to force himself in office for a certain agenda. And so if those particular political parties do not hold themselves true to the constitution of their existence, as well as their, responsible, their responsibilities to the society and then to the government at large, we will continue to have these anomalies and then these anomalies will present persons that will come and run for office. And then, as usual, at the final analysis, when they win their positions and they are acting in power, we come and we're making reference to them and they say, no, 
do not talk to me. I bought my election. Okay. And then you see, you see them now being anti-party. Why? Because they came to the party and bought the entire party hierarchy. And then they became the candidate of the party. And so now they are not responsible to you because they have paid you off day before yesterday. Okay. So you cannot come now today and hold them responsible for their actions, as Let the case may be. Interesting. Let me go back to um, Barista Logo. Still talking about the, um, you know, Senator Mwagege and the, the issues he referred to. Um, Akoje has talked about emergence. Let's talk about campaign rally rules. One of the people or a group of people that has really constantly been on the necks of politicians and governments in this country is Serap. Um, for almost five years, if I'm not mistaken, if not more, Serap has been in asking political parties in this country to show their party finances. They've not been able to make it public. Serap is in courts. Five years down the line, our political parties are yet to make public their party finances. Senator Morgege also talked about campaign rally rules. Do we really follow these rules to the latter? Because we see, I mean, right now, if, we, if you take a look at the election calendar, it's so messy that, you know, sometimes you, you sometimes forget what election is happening at what time of the year. So let's talk about those rules. Let's talk about openness and party financing, um, transparency. Why is it such a tough call for our politicians and political parties? You know, I, I started by amplifying the essence of the rule of law. And it established that no country can maintain a rule of law society if its people do not respect the laws. Everyone must make a commitment to respect laws, legal authorities, and of course, the basic ethical behaviors expected from stakeholders. And you can see now, like rightly mentioned, Sarah is trying to touch on the accountability aspect of good governance. But the same authority that is driving the leadership process is not willing to cooperate with the process of justice. So what do you have? You just have a society that is being held in the neck by a group of persons who have benefited from the people by getting into offices. And that is the point we are making. In a true democracy, we have the upward revolving authority, which means authority belongs to the people. And they now pass it over to those who are elected to manage their affairs. But you and I know that in our beloved country, the moment they get into that office, most of them become untouchable. And it's as if they don't hear the electorates anymore, or they push the electorates to a corner until they start preparing for the next election. And that is in itself is a dangerous signal. We need a leadership that will subject herself to the accountability and to present their activities to the people, whether demanded or not. And if you look at the scenario of executive order, in the United States of America, executive order emanated from this expectation. When the president called on the key players in, the, in, in government that come, you have to come and present to the people your scorecards. But here, we keep begging for this, protesting and asking for responsible leadership. But we hardly find it. And that's why I agree that this is not a function of the laws we have. If you go by the laws we have in this country, this country should be sanitized. But we just do not respect the laws. For example, you may ask, what are the basic principles of law? Generally speaking, we have the principle of natural justice. Everybody is equal under the law. Can we say the same? Can I claim to be equal with a, a strong politician when we all engage the laws of the land? And everyone's rights are important. You just make reference to one now. I have the right to know how much are you expending in your campaigns and everything. These things are, are documented. But if you request for it, what will happen? Look at what happened in this country recently. The acting chairman of EFCC was pushed out of office on the basis of some allegations. Where is it today? He's not being prosecuted. So if those allegations were strong enough to move him from office, do we end it there? Are we not reinforcing crime in the land? But you just find out that some personalities appear to be above the law. And everybody has the right to fear treatment. You know, Look at the reference my wonderful colleague uh, made to the primaries. 
you just find situations where you claim to be engaging in primaries uh, to produce candidates. And some powerful weeks just come around, impose candidates on people, and we call that democracy. And that's one of the issues that is bordering Omo Agege now. That we need to look at the whole value chain of our electoral processes and be able to present to the world, if not a perfectly credible electoral processes, but at least something that is enhanced. And if we cannot achieve that, then why are we going about making more laws? And these are the positions some of us have, you know, uh, looked at to agree with him, you know. And when we say procedures must be fair, it must be fair, unbiased, relevant, and appropriate process to produce good governance. But if you go to the boardroom and try to do what we call returns on investment, look at how much you have invested in the electoral processes in terms of finance and time, you know, have we gotten value? Have we claim that our society is getting better. Hmm. What has happened to the primary purpose of government in section 14, subsection 2 of the Nigerian Constitution 1999 as amended? It says that the security and the welfare of the people shall be the primary purpose of government. As of today, the unemployment rate in Nigeria is 33%. As of today, the total indebtedness of my great nation is about 33.11 uh, trillion naira as against 12.12 .12 trillion naira in 2015. You see, and we can go on and on. Look yeah. at the killings all around, the bandits, the unknown government, the terrorism in the land. So when you look at all this, you must be interested in uh, driving an advocacy that let's change our culture, let's change okay. our attitude, let's change our mindset to governance. And when we lay that solid foundation, we can now begin to empower and expand the cost of the laws we have. Right now, my argument, and I own it, is that we have enough laws to make things work in this country. And if some are in doubt, I'm appealing to our great audience this evening, please create time to study Section 14, Section 17 of the Nigerian Constitution 1999 as amended. You'll be amazed at the provisions that are there. And I have always argued okay. that if the provisions in this Chapter 2 are implemented up to 60%, Nigeria will be the third richest country in the world. And that is my position. So it's okay. not about the law. Right. It's about allowing the prevalence of the laws and complying with the laws, subjecting ourselves to the laws and ensuring that the laws are effective. When you have ineffective laws, it's as bad as you don't have laws at all. Okay. Finally, um, let me come back to you, Mr. Koje. Um, voter education. Um, we all know that there's been this continuous voter registration online and some people have to still go in person. And we still see that, that a lot of people are not as open to these registrations. People are not taking it as serious as they should. And let's not forget, in 2015, um, in 2019, I beg your pardon, we saw a drop in the number of people who um, registered to vote. In fact, the number of people who registered were more than the number of people who showed up. Uh, at the polling units to vote. And then, of course, again, if you look at what happened here in Lagos State during the local government elections, I like to make reference to it. There was, I mean, barely anybody at the, at the polling units. So do we wait till it's close to election season, then we see the NOA uh, with the little impress they're given, try to do what they call voter education? Um, what do we need to do? Because we keep talking about free, fair, credible elections, but then we keep f failing to address this teething problems such as people not even being interested uh, in the electoral process in itself and because maybe because they do not agree with the fact that it can be credible and free okay so if i may just engage in some form of definition what you just mentioned in simply in simple form is voter apathy and it refers if i may read lack of interest in participating in elections by a certain group of voters you cannot force someone to engage in the electoral process. That is one, because it's their right to vote or be voted for. Yeah, it, it is their right. I'm sorry to talk over you. It is their right, but what, what gives you the right to try to ask for good governance if you do not engage in the electoral process or in the picking process? Uh, not voting is also making a choice of sorts. So why complain at the end of the day? And we see a lot of that coming from Nigerians. Then you go down to the ingredients of voter party. What will make me feel that if I cast my vote, it doesn't make a voice? If the ecosystem in question has no credibility, I won't waste my time. Let me use that adjective. Remember, our voting process is bedeviled with 
insanity. You need to actually take your bath and prepare yourself to waste a whole day. Take note of the adjective waste to make sure that your vote is casted. And then mandate protection, which is what we do now in 2021 because we have gone past the idea of voting. Because right now in Nigeria, the idea of mandate protection is even more sacrosanct than even voting. Because it's not enough to vote and you go home. Because right now we have instances where you vote, go home, and the next thing you will find out is that the election in your particular award has been cancelled. Why? Because thugs came and cutted away with the election, with the ballot box. Or a case where whatever natural circumstances happened in the space of two minutes and all the ballots were missing. Mm -hmm. Or a case where the person that is supposed to declare the votes of the ballot of the, that particular award is put under duress. Mm -hmm. And so, with all of these things existing in an ecosystem, persons will always cast as passions to their roles in that particular election. And this particular option is down to the government in question. If basic needs are not made available, if all I'm thinking of is working my life out nine to nine, and then I come home to rest, and on Saturday, which is the only day that I'm supposed to rest, there is an election. In as much as I have a say in that local government or in that particular world, by the grace of myself, I don't want to use God because by the grace of myself, I will want to rest because I have suffered a whole lot for 364 days. And on the 365th day, I'm supposed to come for an election that will, or in many cases, I will be chased away from the, bar, from the unit because thugs have come and they've raised arms and they have made everybody scared of the location and then we run away. Okay. So in that particular case, it's the government that needs to take the bull by the horn. Okay. You have put laws do not ex not enough, you have put processes in place, you have employed persons to manage the electoral process, parties have taken their time to put their observers, they've been taking their time to bring out persons to run for offices. Government should make the polling process sanitized such that persons All right. with clear mind can come out and cast their vote or even think of casting their votes. If for anything, we praise the election management body for taking the bull by the horn and starting the voter registration process early. Most times we know why they do not start this process early, so that the whole lot of persons can be disenfranchised. Well, but we in this case now, for 2021, they started the, vote, the voter registration process a little bit earlier than before. And so I'm, I'm actually very hopeful as a young man in politics, as an aspirant of good governance, as a faithful Nigerian, this is one of the greatest times of my life that I believe that there's hope for 2023. All right, because we for a start, to... we're going to have a lot of persons that will have registered to vote. Not enough, yes, compared to the population that we have in the country. We but have at to least go. We'll have a good number. Madam. We have to go. Jido Logo is a, a legal practitioner, and uh, Kevin Akoje is a political analyst. Thank you very much, gentlemen. It means that there's more of this conversation that needs to be had. And of course, uh, the ball is in our courts. Thank you very much for speaking with us, gentlemen. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. We will take a short break. And when we come back, the Yoruba group, Afeni Ferre, has urged people to defend themselves against bandits. Does this sound very familiar? We'll talk about it after this break.